Hello everybody, Flick here, it's time for yet another Let's Look At and today we are taking a look at Neon Chrome and this menu music is amazing. This is by 10 Tons Limited, which was actually a name that rung a bell for me, yet I looked at their catalogue on Steam and I don't remember covering any of the other games they did. Something about the name of the company, it just it rung a bell. Anyway, Neon Chrome, other than having a fantastic soundtrack, is a top-down twin-stick shooter, plays a little bit like Hotline Miami without the excessive violence, I guess, and blood. With roguelike elements, also kind of like Rogue Legacy-esque persistent upgrading, that sort of thing. I've been playing it a little bit off-camera, I had an amazing run just before I decided to record this, where I got like 4,000 credits in the one run, which is a lot for early on. Look at the cost of upgrades, even though I've done a few of them. So I was able to buy a crap ton of upgrades. However, what I wish I'd noticed, before I spent all the money on mostly more slots so you can put upgrades in when you go on a run, is I didn't realise you actually had to buy the things you've unlocked so that they start appearing. I thought after I unlocked them they were just unlocked, but it seems like you also have to spend credits to actually buy them. Really wish I'd spotted that beforehand. Anyway, the general theme is that you're trying to overthrow this overseer, and you're playing as this guy, but rather than send yourself in, you use these kind of like surrogate bodies down here, and they are randomised. Different starting weapons, different special abilities, different stats, different perks. And you use them to try and get your revenge. There's hacks over here, I'm not sure what these are for yet. I can look at this, but there's nothing else like that. Maybe you have to finish the game once before you can initiate more hacks, I'm not sure. Anyway, there is also co-op, but sadly, as with most decent roguelikes on Steam, it's local only. Anyway, let's jump in and we'll see what our choice is. So, assets, that's what they call them. So we can either be this guy, this guy, this guy. Alright, let's see. More energy, more speed. More energy, less hit points. Much more damage, much less speed. Carries a right shield, which decreases frontal damage by 25%. That's got a regen... The run I had that was fantastic off camera had a regening shield as well, and it was so handy. Has a companion drone that enables hacking and also can open special boxes. Burst rifle, laser pulse, laser pul pulse, micro missiles. I'm thinking of going just for the major damage. The thing that screwed me on the run I, I was doing beforehand was I got to the first boss and I nearly took it down, but I just I couldn't. Ah, the regening shield was so handy though, but the minus 20% hit points is making me... We're going to go for this one. So I'm going to move slower than normal, but I'm going to do more damage. And then you are thrown into a randomised run. I've done the tutorial run, as it were, so you're not going to see any additional story. Oh hey, I've never had a red soldier before. But yeah, you just kind of like get spit out of these cubicles. There's how the assault rifle fires are to reload. Down here, ammo count. This bar here, oh you can't quite, well, you know which bar I'm on. Those are how many charges of my special attack I have, which in this case is micro missiles, so that's just firing. So there's where Overseer 1.0 is, way up there. That's how far you've got to get. I have only ever gotten as far as four, and I died to the boss, unfortunately. But yeah, we're in. So there is humanoid enemies of a sort, but it's mostly kind of like drones and stuff. Also, we're getting an upgrade station straight away, which is very lucky. So at upgrade stations, you get to pick one of a randomised selection of your unlocks in terms of cybernetics. You started with only, I think, four slots, or maybe it was only three. I bought a bunch of open slots so I can do much more customization. So anyway, we can pick this, which gives us a... Every explosive you deploy has a 25% chance to spawn three. Don't really have explosives, so that's not for me. Well, my right click is explosive. Hmm. Improves the clip size of weapons by 50%. That's not bad. Or... 10% speed increase. That instantly mitigates the negative I started with and gives me 10% more health, so I'm going to take that. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Oh, that down there is a key. Think of it like Doom style. There's yellow keys, red keys, what have you. So what I like about this, it feels very fluid to control and a lot of the scenery is actually destructible. Particularly against the boss, the boss just wrecks the arena that you're in. You have to be a hacker to do something here. Okay, we'll just do this the hard way then. So for example, is that a wall I can break? Hmm, maybe not that one. Not every wall is breakable because otherwise you'd fall off the level but a lot of a level is destructible. Ah, those for instance can definitely be destroyed, so can the wall in front of it. So you can cause a lot of trouble, and generally, I guess early on, you're not expecting to go win. So what you're hoping for is to generate as many credits as possible so you can buy a bunch of upgrades, 
so that permanently it's easier for you to get further. There's a loot crate, which gives us some more credits. The the blue charities are towards your, your, your whatever your special skill is for the character that you've selected. If we get into a busy room, well, this one isn't really busy enough. I'll show off what mine does. But you don't have infinite charges, so I kind of want to hold on to what I have. Oh, that was nearly... Oh, I did get hit, actually, for eight. We will come across healing stations as well, though. See, this is where the regening shield was so handy. I had a health bar, yes, but I also had the regening shield. Your guys are not as accurate as I would like them to be sometimes. There is that. So, by the way, if you are interested in the OST, you can buy that separately, independent of the game. And it is great. I really, really like the OST here. Pardon me. There we are. Oi! Come this way. Alright, so there's my special. I used up one charge of the bar down here. And I'm um, picking up these blue charges to try and get it back, which I just did. Yeah, you can actually hold the button down, but you get very inaccurate after a little bit of burst fire. I think we're about done on this floor nearly. Oh, we have a humanoid enemy. There is different damage types in the game. For Oh, he's a key master, actually. We have to kill him to get a key. So he'll be tougher. Not tough enough to stop a rocket, though. Yeah, and different weapon energy types do better against different enemies. So, like, electrical is better against non-organic. You must be a hacker to get into there. Can I break the wall from around here, I wonder? No, it's deliberately put it like it, invincible walls around it. Fine. Energy regeneration. In case I might as well just burn some energy. Don't mind me. Ah, you've got to hit both switches. All right. So yeah, all these levels are randomized. This is not the same level one that I've seen before. We'll take that look. Oh, we get an ammo crate. So it gave us a burst rifle, which is much higher DPS. Base damage nine, accuracy excellent. It's just a better, yeah, okay, well, hang on. Ah, but it has to fire in bursts, right. It's still probably better. I like the higher damage. We'll take the loot. So now we have to go back and find where we use the yellow key, I guess, and then actually leave the level. Oh wait, here it is here. And that's how a floor of neon chrome goes. It gets harder, obviously, and the bosses are very difficult. But yeah, I've been enjoying what little of it I've played so far. I admit I haven't played a ton of it, but... I was very recently, I covered another roguelike-ish game. And it, I can't remember the name now, but it, it, it also focused on guns. But all the guns were just boring. And because I'd been playing Gungeon, you couldn't really compare it. Oh, we won't be taking that. Couldn't really compare the two favorably because Gungeon does the it does gunplay so much better. I think Gungeon is still better in terms of gunplay compared to Neon Chrome, but they have a much nicer kind of gameplay mechanic going on here. It isn't just about the guns. Plus, there are special guns you can unlock. I didn't realize you had to buy the unlocks that I'd earned, so that they get added to the item pool. You're not going to get get guns that fire rainbows. You know what I mean? You're not going to get a peapod shooting gun. But for this type of game compared to that other one, which I really wish I could remember the name of that I covered recently. Oh, actually it was called, it was Bunker something. That one. That's the one I'm talking about. This one does better because it isn't trying to focus on guns. Got hit quite a bit there, lost a whole chunk of HP, and we have not... Oh wait, there's a healing station in there, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> if I get hit a bunch now, it's okay. We need the key bearer who's in... Wow, that is a lot of enemies in there. Well, we'll be using up some of my energy bar then. Ow. Thank goodness I have the take less damage from the front. Oh, he's the same though. It turns out you can't block a rocket with a shield though, can you? What is that? Ooh, energy booster. Don't mind if I do. We'll just let my energy constantly regen. We'll just blow that up as well, because why not? Screw the corporations! Alright, it's going to wear off now, so there we are. Oh, that's the room with a lot of people, though. Alright, there's the Keymaster dead. So we're going to go back now and open up that door that he was blocking. 
I'm not sure if the credits on the floor disappear after a little while, so there we go. And the item room... <laughs> well, the item room equivalent is actually right next to the exit this time. Hmm, didn't come in here. Oh yeah, I totally forgot that sneak attacks are a thing in this game. If you hit an enemy in the back, you will deal more damage. There we go, we got healed a little bit. Not enough to get back to full HP though. Sneak attack again, we get a better quality chest. Alright, we're up to 1400 credits. As I said in that awesome run I did before recording this, I got like 4000 or 3800. And it meant I could buy a crap ton of damage ups and HP ups. Alright, let's see what choices we get this time. So, we have an instant reward. This is how I actually got a lot of the credits I had in that last run. It was like, here's 2,000 credits, and I took it because I didn't have any slots left anyway. So what does this do? 50% chance of active robotic enemies to... Well, that's... No, it's not relevant for this floor. Your normal projectiles inflict double base damage when your health is under 20%, or... Increase health by 50% and melee damage by 50. Hmm... I will take the higher HP cap since I don't have a shield. We'll take that. You can hear the elevator music, which I like. And we'll go up to the next floor. So if you're liking what you're seeing, there will be a link in the description box below for the Steam page for Neon Chrome. The asking price is a little on the high side for where I usually consider indie games to be correctly priced at £10.99. It's only a little bit too high though. And I think the, the OST separately was like £3.99 off from memory. Right, what is this? This is a upgrade station. Alright, so we just got better DPS. It's a random chance what kind of upgrade you get from stations that look like this. Uh, there's ones that just increase your clip size and whatnot as well. So, we unlocked two of the 13 possible weapons in Chapter 1. But as I said, we'll get a free one now, but I think you have to buy another one to unlock. Hey, get away, I'm trying to decide what I'm using here. DPS is ever so slightly lower, base damage is higher, and accuracy is awesome. It's a sniper rifle, essentially. I can't resist this sniper rifle. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Ooh, I like... Hey, 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 hey. Uh, that rocket is not functioning correctly. There we are. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen a special actually kind of mess up. Damn those flower shooting things. Ah, I threw a grenade! Took some damage there that I kind of wish I didn't. Got rid of that one. There's another one though, isn't there? Oh no, it's a shield guy. Didn't actually run into a lot of shield guys last time. Maybe you have to punch them. Hmm. Alright. Relax a little bit. I figured I could shoot through that wall and get him there. This seems to have a high penetration rate. Still, we did lose a lot of HP. See, it can't expect you to kill these with a special, so there must be a, a trick to them. Shield has a hidden health bar. Oh no, wait, no, we are damaging him. Just gotta circle straight, Dark Souls style, I guess. So yeah, th sorry, to get back to my rambling point. Asking price, a little bit high for what you're getting, but it is a finished game, it's not early access. You're getting the whole thing, barring any you know, free upgrades, that kind of thing, updates rather. And I like what I've played, it's sitting on an overwhelmingly positive Steam review rating at the time of me recording this, although I will say it does seem to be flying under the radar a little bit, which is a shame. That, again, might be a hangover of Gungeon still being so fresh in everybody's minds. But I would say don't ignore it. Turned a good thing here. I like the aesthetic, although, you know, Cyberpunk is kind of like my thing as well. Get rid of the Grenadier. We are. So we should be about done with this floor. I I'll just keep going until I die. We should probably be on the floor one boss. Goodness for my melee attack there. Oh, Keymaster. He is not taking a lot of damage from explosives because he uses explosives. Yeah, he's immune to blast damage. That's what it is. There we are. Alright, we have a red key. So yeah, I'll play until I die. And that will probably do it. Although this end might end up being a better run, because as I say, I've got tons of damage and health upgrades. If I can find myself a shield, then we could go great places. Hmm, what's in here? Ah, a doctor. 
sneak attack. Oh, he turned around. Oh, I didn't also notice the item room is actually in here as well. There we are. Let's see what our upgrade choices are. Duramax size, I like the sound of that. What are these? Improves melee damage by 150%. Or more HP again. Or the explosive thing. I'm taking the size. Please tell me you actually have a size when you melee attack. Eh, you can definitely tell it's got a bigger swath to it. There we are, back to full HP near enough. Alright, so my melee damage is doing 200% more, right? Because I had the 50% first and then I had that one. That should be a viable option. Use the red key. Yeah, I'm melee attacking for 79. That's pretty good. Oh, they explode. Alright, don't melee those ones. <laughs> This is getting to be a powerful run. Oh. And we're done on this floor. Away we go. Alright, floor four. So, yeah, this is the boss arena. I may die to the boss again. I guess we'll see. It looks like it's the same boss as well, based on the... the layout. This is the same layout so far. Yep, that's the boss right there. Yeah, this battleground is going to get wrecked throughout this fight. Uh, and here we go. First things first, you've got to get away from him. Because there's not any scenery up there to hide behind. Yeah, this shill of So we're going to give it the run around and hope that we can kill it before we run out of scenery to hide behind. The little spiders are going to constantly spawn throughout the fight. But luckily, because this build has such good melee, I should just be able to punch them. Alright, that was a good hit. Now, because I didn't use the healer, I think it's still available. So that might be our saving grace here. Phase 2. You can see the phases in itself bar, incidentally. Yeah, that's a lot of bullets, alright. Thank goodness I'm blocking 20% extra damage from the front. Just in case we die, I'll grab those loot boxes now. See what I mean about him just cutting a swath through the scenery? We're still not doing a lot of damage. Ah! Get away! Yeah, if you get close, it triggers a proximity thing. Nothing to hide behind. Oh, we got him to final phase though. I'm curious if this works. Oh, it does! Alright, we're back in this. No, I don't want you to lock onto the spiders, I want you to lock onto the boss. is hurting more now though. He's also more accurate than me. Despite this gun being rated very accurate. Come on. Come on. We've, we've almost got him. I want to see what happens after you kill a boss. He's taking less damage. He's almost down though. Die! Yes! I think. Yeah! There we go. Spider bot done. Alright. We are now officially further than I made it off camera. Give me the good stuff. I assume spiders will stop spawning now. So let me just kill the ones that are up for some easy credits. Oh, I didn't notice there was an upgrade thing there. Give me a shotgun. Um, I'll give it a go. I do usually like zombie uh, shotguns in zombie type situations. I don't know if these really classify as that. Oh, they are actually still spawning. That seems like a mistake, because can't I just farm these forever? There we are. I knew there'd be scenery that I could actually break at some point. Point, rather. Yeah, it looks like I could just kill these indefinitely. So that might want to be looked at. 
Well, for the sake of just seeing what awaits us beyond the first boss, I'll go down to the next floor now. Let's go have a look. Believe it or not, we're still under what I had, even though I had a run where I died on that boss. So it looks like boss floors are the same, but the, the normal levels are randomised. This Ooh, is the... Charles Whaler, hmm. Drews. Our founder, aged 140 years, is still the supreme leader of Neon Corp. I was just going to say, it looks like we got a story level. Sometimes that can happen. Yeah, the exit is right there, but there's other stuff we can do. All right, it's this is forcing Charles, us this to... Is yeah, no, we heard. Room, the largest habitable building ever created. Over a million people call Neon Chrome their home. Armacor, a subsidiary of Neon Corp, is securing the future of everyone in Neon Chrome. Hmm, can't get in there. Neon Corp is a multi-planetary corporation with over 10 million employees. Last year revenues exceeded 5 trillion. With over 200 employees on Mars, Neon Corp is also a pioneer in exploiting off Earth resources. Neon yeah, 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 I know. You don't need to keep replaying. I'm pressing the switches to try and work out where I'm supposed to be going here. The immersion chair gives the overseer total control. This looks important. Are you still trying to bring down everything I've built? Hey, I broke your chairs. They claim I've lost my mind, but they're misguided. I've simply become more effective. Damn it. I noticed that it went down and then we went past. I don't like that that's an insta kill. Obviously, you had to hit the switches after the enemies brought down the. Thingy. But anyway, we have stuff to upgrade, so we can go back now. And now I want to look at here and see what we can unlock. So there's a submachine gun, there's an assault rifle. Purchase assault rifle at level 5 for your next asset. Oh, wait, these are maybe one time upgrades, so you start with a stronger weapon. Ah, maybe I did misunderstand then. about unlocking abilities. I have to find that one. Ah, yeah. These are so you can spend some cash to customise a particular type of soldier you want to use. That's what I think these are. Yeah. They're starting skill, they're starting weapons, they're starting abilities. Alright, so it is still more important to do these kind of upgrades for damage, health, luck, etc. So for example, we'll buy some health, buy some damage, buy some luck, we'll buy some of this. Uh, six slots is probably enough until you start getting further into the game, so... Let's see... More energy, more of that, and more of that, and more of that. So these are the permanent upgrade systems, and there's a hundred levels of each, or you know, apart from slots to unlock, so there's a lot of stuff to do, and you can see the bonus currently. 142 to 147, damage is going up by like 5% per level, that's pretty good. HP is going up by a set amount. So yeah, Neon Chrome, if you're into your roguelikes with persistent upgrading to make you better and make your runs easier in the future, and you don't mind this kind of aesthetic, I'd say give it a look. Go check out the link in the description box below if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ta-ta for now.